Hello everybody, Ninjas here and welcome back to Kono Sekaiwafu Kanzen Sugiru episode 9 in which uh, we will probably meet the elf lady in uh, in a bit more capacity, is that the correct term to use here? We're gonna meet her a little bit more because we've met her as in we know that she exists and that she's a, uh, a, a tester and that she's an elf and that she... Uh, bears us no ill will, but we don't really know much about her. Um, our characters don't even know her... N no, she she did introduce herself. They know her name. So there is at least that. Uh, but besides that, I don't know. Uh, I expect an episode a little bit more on the lighter side, right? We're gonna be setting off for the next adventure, uh, whatever that adventure might be. That's essentially my prediction right now. Uh, I see that my camera is doing some weird stuff with... Oh, and this photo should probably go there. <laughs> uh, my camera is doing some weird stuff with my white shirt. It, it's trying to make everything dark because the shirt is so bright because it's white. Well, here's a lesson to never wear white again to a recording. Uh, right, regardless. Uh, what happened in the previous episode? Let's start with that. Because... Two things really happened. Three. Four, actually. A couple of things happened. Uh, pretty, uh, like, pretty... Shit, I, I'm, I'm losing words today. Uh, quite a few, actually, things happened, if you think about it, because we got those two, like, parallel storylines, so those things were, like, evenly distributed between them, uh, so we got more than uh, we would have gotten in a single one. And uh, those two storylines was the storyline of Amano, uh, as he went on a journey with Shacho, and the other one was Haga and uh, Nicola. Uh, Haga and Nicola set off to find, perhaps, a job change for her, because she wants to be useful, because she wants to contribute to the team, and uh, Haga also believes that this would probably be good, both for her morale and, you know, it's better to have another capable person in the team than not have them, so of course. Unfortunately, uh, she was rejected from a, um, uh, what was it, Thieves Guild, because... Well, Haga told her that she needs to be at least 15 to join, but we know that the real reason is, as we heard, and that's an important thing that we heard, once a villager, always a villager. NPCs can't change classes, NPCs cannot respect, NPCs cannot become anybody except who they were right from the get-go. So um, that's not happening, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, of course, Haga couldn't bear seeing Nicola dejected. Uh, she was looking so much into all sorts of quests and trying to figure out uh, where they should go next, right? And being overall hyped uh, to, be a, uh, to be a thief or to be a ninja or to be a warrior or whatever, right? And be this big adventurer uh, helping the party contributing. Alas. Uh, they went to a blacksmith, eventually. Haga was probably hoping that she might as at least like wield some weapon or something, right? Sh sure, she's a villager, but she should be able to wield like level 1 sword and do at least some damage, help at least some. Um, unfortunately, not so much, because most weapons are locked to stats, right? Health, stamina, wisdom, stuff like that. Uh, which Nicola, being a villager and only 14, she probably doesn't have many, much. Is it countable or, or uncountable stats in general? I don't know, doesn't matter. Uh, thankfully, the blacksmith had a very interesting item, uh, that being a skull that uh, creates a blast of magical energy depending on your level. I believe. Uh, they said something like, depending on your potential, like vague terms, uh, Haga believes it to be a level, so I'm gonna assume it's a level. Uh, Haga was able to blast a pretty big blast, and then Nicola got her hands on it, and uh, she did an even bigger blast, a blast that went through like a couple of buildings. 
Why? Well, not because she has a lot of potential, which is I, which is what I thought it would be, right? That she's special somehow. She has a ton of potential, just not in the like usual ways of this world or whatever. Uh, but no, at least according to Haga, again, according to his best understanding, it's a glitched item that takes into account your uh, level, applies some formula to it, and if you happen to be a villager like Nicola, at level zero, perhaps, then the damage and the power of the weapon just rolls all the way around to maximum. And that's how she's able to use it so well. Unfortunately, it uses mana, stamina, something. Uh, so she was instantly, well, not instantly, but she was quickly knocked out cold. And she had to recuperate in bed, sleeping. So uh, a bit like uh, a bit like a Megumin from Konosuba, right? One big blast and then just, just falls unconscious or whatever. So she's gonna be... Uh, Nicola's gonna be a trump card a couple of times. I assume uh, she's gonna she's gonna contribute to the team, which is ultimately what she wanted so much, right? She's gonna get what she what she wanted without a class change. Um, yeah, we got this. Uh, we got the skull, and that explains the skull from the opening and all the like promo art and stuff. And meanwhile, uh, Amano was on a journey with Shacho on a journey to uh, meet up first of all, and uh, finally here the. Mm, what am I call it? The conditions of the of the deal. First, Amano had to retrieve his uh, debugging tablet, and then they went together to Luz Village, uh, because Shacho claims that he found out a console command, a very special command that they didn't like give them away, but he had to learn himself. He had to figure it out by accident or by just experimentation. And he did have a command to revive an NPC. Uh, they used that command, and uh, sure enough, Lou came back. The NPC Lou came back from, or came back, not really. Uh, a new instance of that NPC has been created, basically. It you know, shouldn't matter during the debugging process whether the NPC keeps the memories or doesn't keep them, right? As long as the NPC is there. In case the game breaks because of their lack, you can just respawn that NPC and proceed with your testing. That was probably the thinking. Uh, which means that, yes, Lou is back in uh, in body and in, in mind, but not... And in spirit, I guess, as well. But it's not the same Lou, is what I'm trying to say, and failing at it. Uh, yeah, it's still Lou, right? Ha probably has her personality, has her looks, has her everything, but doesn't have her memories. She just doesn't have a clue who Amano is. Uh, she doesn't remember anything that happened. We could treat it as amnesia. That would probably be, uh, be the easier way to digest this situation. So... So yeah, so that's essentially how Amano treats it, I believe. Mm. He decided to leave, right? Ultimately, he got closure, right? Uh, he he did whatever he could. Lou is back. She can go on live her own life without him. Sure, but she's alive, and that's all that matters, really. Or that's the thing that matters most, rather. Uh, then there came the time in their um, like uh, tent somewhere. Uh, there came the time to to pay the toll, right, to Shacho because you don't just get a power like that for free, of course. And his demand was to the surprise of absolutely nobody uh, that he is given Amano's uh, the bagging stone. Uh, Amano, of course, uh, gave that stone to him because he just didn't really didn't really need it, or he claims that he doesn't need it, right? Uh, he even started questioning the the point of it all, the the world, the sense of it. Are we even gonna get out? Is there any point struggling? Uh, all sorts of defeatist attitudes like that. 
Uh, to which Shacho had a very visceral reaction, because he needs to believe that there is a way out. He needs to believe in something. He needs that light in the tunnel, otherwise he's just gonna go mad. And if people start questioning that, well, we can't have that, can we? And so he had a bit of an outburst. Uh, we also learned that he has a wife and an infant child waiting for him, and that's when she, when he was cleaved in two. Like, laterally, just... Is this lateral? No, this is lateral, right? This is... I only know vertical and horizontal. I don't know what lateral is, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> he was bisected, in any case, by the Dark Knight that we've already met. And, um, yeah, that's where that uh, segment ended, essentially. Um, Amano keeps his tablet. Well, well, we don't know that, but I assume that he keeps it. If not, then he's probably going give to give it to Tesla to dispose of. And then our stories converge in a, in, in an inn room uh, with uh, where Nicola and Haga are staying. Uh, Amano arrives, comes back, and uh, with him, the Black Knight. Yeah, uh, the Black Knight who takes off her helmet and introduces herself as Akira something, Akira Amano, maybe? I'm not sure, I, I can't remember her, her second name. Mm. She introduces herself, says that she's also a member of some company or other, and uh, that's where the episode ends. So I'm assuming in today's episode we're gonna uh, we're gonna meet up in uh, full, right? We're gonna learn more about her, about her goals, about her purpose. Um, Haga's gonna learn about what transpired with Shacho, I assume, and uh, we're gonna have to figure out a new course chart a new course to get rid of more tablets, of course, and the bug on the way. And uh, we're gonna have to get uh, Akira to come with us somehow, uh, whether it will be because our goals um, coincide, uh, whether it will be because she wanted to like leave her old party, we don't know the reason. Uh, we can't even really begin to to think what the reason could possibly be. Uh, but there is gonna be a reason for them all to travel together, and that's what matters, right? And that's what we're gonna see in this episode. I assume I've already spent a lot of time talking, so how about we just watch for a change, shall we? Uh, to do that, you're gonna need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show, and I'm gonna have to ask you for support. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon, YouTube, down below, or not. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you nothing and helps a lot. And with that, we can start watching Konosekai Wafu Kanzen Suguru episode 9 in 3, 2, 1, go! Oh, uh, volume down. Yep, yeah, Bamko and Kodansha. And we get a recap anyway. <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. Oh, it's uh, Amano doing the recap. Interesting. All memories in general, yeah. Akira, Akira Kaga, <laughs> whatever, Akira Kagami, yeah. Yeah, engaged in some good old PvP. Right, it's instanced, isn't it? No, oh, just because she was in the area. Yeah, interesting. Well, that's a bug to file, isn't it? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, so she wasn't just kneeling menacingly, she was picking up a coin. <laughs> ah, <laughs> amazing. I mean, yeah, undeniably. And here I was hoping for a love interest. <laughs> I mean, it's not out of the question, but... Yeah, she's asleep. Let her sleep, yeah. Oh, did your group also went rogue? Or were they also... are they also stuck like uh, Haga's team? Did you discover why you can't log out? Do you have an idea how to log out? Is the world slowly crumbling apart? Are the servers being shut down sequentially. Does the company plan to shut the servers down? And you have a time limit. Plenty of possibilities, actually. I'm assuming Amano's gonna level up his skills eventually. I don't think level 1 would be able to, like, lift this many enemies this easily. And uh, the people with, uh, we haven't seen yet. Yeah, there's three. Akira Kagami. Oh, yeah, that's the person from the opening. <laughs> Would you look at that? Okay, so you just living here? Sure. Makes sense. I mean, different ways to cope, right? Wanna team up? Yeah. I mean, sure, it's better to have a capable person than to not have one, right? As I said. I thought my cat wants something, but no. Yeah, she didn't really have any scruples doing that, did she? Exactly. Didn't even stop to try and figure out what's going on there. True. Fair. Oh, she has the staff. Uh, so you're not gonna talk about your little adventure, are you? Still keeping secrets, eh? I mean, sure. That's one way to look at it. Yeah, let's not report that one quite yet.
Mage, Thief, Warrior? I mean, a decent party. They don't have a dedicated healer or a dedicated uh, tank. I guess a warrior could be tanking, right? Mixing scrambled eggs with whipped cream would not be my choice. <laughs> but then again, people eat like bacon and maple syrup. So maybe someone likes it. I don't know. Quite a lot, actually, yeah. Okay. I mean, follow the main quest. Chances are you're gonna see most of the game that way. Hmm. Uh, did you hear that rule from Amano? Or... <laughs> As usual. At least it's not rocks. It's scrambled eggs and whipped cream. Fencer with a Zweihander. Well, that's something. Yeah, it's probably cumbersome to travel in it. Mm. More like a mage, really. At this point, but sure. Long distances, eh? Is it actually this long of a distance in game? Like, I can't imagine having to play the game for, like, what? Assume. 12 hour session every day you would have to play the game for 20 days to get from village to village and realistically you would not be playing 12 hours a day so there's that fine balance between realism and gameplay fun right then again Days are usually shorter in games than they are in real life, right? Like, the time is two times speed or three times speed or, or whatever. Is this something to debug, though? Probably a giant? Oh, no, the smaller prince. That's a big moon. What the fuck are those alerts on my phone? Okay, that's how she's gonna get into cooking. Nice. We got a dedicated cook. Meat, some stew, some slideshows. Oh, that's a nice berry tart, apparently. It looks like cheesecake with some berry, like, drizzle, maybe.
Oh, Tesla, you're not gonna let Nikola eat, are you? Or is Tesla gonna judge? <laughs> right. I mean, your cooking skill isn't leveled up, so it's probably all just level dependent. True. Yeah, he probably just leveled up any skill that would allow him debugging, right? Uh, I don't know, acrobatics to jump higher and run faster. Yeah, that's a giant, all right. With a hand and a leg missing. What could have taken them off? The buggers? Evil the buggers or good the buggers? Or... Oh, more giants. Well, who cleaved that one apart? I don't know. I guess we're gonna learn in time. No, oh, they're just here to retrieve his body, I guess. Yeah, they just wanted to retrieve the body. Is that a debugger? A player, I would think, of some sort. I mean, if a player, then of course a debugger. Or just a strong NPC? Uh, player. <laughs> That's not the voice of an... Uh. Could actually be a voice of an NPC, knowing this game. Who the fuck are you? Oh, so a player. Or an NPC seeker? Or... NPC? NPC Seeker? Huh? Microsoft Windows just popped up a window on the side that asks me to log in with my Microsoft account. I don't even know where the fuck into. <laughs> Great. Cool. First the camera doesn't like my white shirt, then Microsoft wants me to log in into fuck knows where. Ah. <sighs> 
Hmm. Yeah, so an NPC turned seeker. Yeah, basically like Nicola. Why is he so strong though? And uh, Nicola is just a villager. Console commands. Or whatever the bug mode. Yeah. NPC set strength 500 or whatever. Yep. Sure enough. The voice of a child. Still. The body of a grown strong man. But the voice of the NPC remains, right? And the NPC was originally a kid. Huh. Probably a good idea, yeah. Hmm. Are there any, like, downsides to that, I wonder? Because if there aren't, then I don't really see how bad would it be to use a console command once to make Nikolai into actually a class that can level up and get stronger. Amano already used the console command, and the world didn't end, right? So even if Haga personally is so against using them, then I could see Amano or, or Akira maybe use a command to help Nikola out. Why odd? Moravi from what? Moravia region? Yeah, he's a freak. People don't like him. Then again, it's just a game. It's just programming. Chances are he would be perceived as the kid that he was originally. And yet he's not. Hmm. I would even say that they look fishy. Mm, people are not happy because a kid was just given magic powers while all of them were like what working on their physique and technique all this time and are so much worse. But at the same time, they cannot deny his like just sheer usefulness. Oh? What's that? Okay, that's useful. I mean, he is a thief. He probably has some abilities that will make sneaking out easier, sneaking around easier. Hmm, that roof is actually kind of good for sneaking and listening in. Right, you're disgruntled because you're out of a job. Well, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Simple. Hmm. 
Is Gadel around, perchance? No, maybe not. No, actually drunk and asleep. Very good question, actually. Hmm. You know, it's like speculating and theorizing about this show is always interesting because it has that additional layer to it, right? Like, in just a pure fantasy show, you speculate about what people have done, what people are about to do, coming out with the assumption that they are, you know, people in general, and that's basically it. In this case, you get the added layer of, but they're NPCs though, but it's a game though, but it could be a bug, right? So you don't really know how much of anything can be based on your assumption that they're that they behave like people and how much is caused by a bug or by something not being programmed right like my assumption that maybe they don't perceive guile or whatever his name is as as this big hulking mass they still perceive him as a child because he still has the child tag attached to him or whatever right yeah always makes uh theorizing that much more interesting um no microsoft i don't want to log in i don't even know where you wanted to log me in so so fuck right off please okay uh let's watch it again hopefully without much Distraction from Microsoft. <laughs> uh, Dragger with Entermation Incorporated. Akira... What? Akira Kagami. Right. Yeah, apparently just get randomly pulled in with them into the instance. Which surely is a bug to file, right? Because uh, you should be getting into the same instance only with people you are in a party with. We haven't really seen them form a party though. Like how exactly does the party system work in this game? We we haven't seen like I don't know Haga pull up a menu and then invite Amano and Nicola to the team. Could Nicola even be invited to a party in the first place? She's an NPC, right? So I'm assuming the party system works just by proximity. Not the best solution. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, she probably shouldn't have been pulled in with them. Uh, this is amazing. She was just picking up a shiny coin. Yeah, that's why she had to kneel down. And it's this, you know, big menacing pose of the last boss in fucking Elden Elden. Elden Ring or Dark Souls or whatever with the beam of light shining on her. But she was just picking a coin. That's great. Yeah, we got a hug. You did good. You did very good all this time. She's very huggy, isn't she? Uh, yeah, that's the uh, person that we've seen. Yeah, the the royal person in the middle, I don't know, queen, king, princess, prince, whatever, uh, clearly visible in, like, I mean, it's clearly the same silhouette, right? Uh, what do I think of these, of this character, though? I mean, the guy on the left and the person in the middle, they certainly seem shady. Right, the guy on the left seems very, very cocky to me, so that gives a little bit of shadiness factor. Uh, the person in the middle, well, completely wide eyes, that's never a good sign. It's either possession or evil or being a background character, but probably not. Uh, the rabbit on the right, 
I don't know. It, it, it's it's a rabbit person, so kind of kind of hard to read. But also the background, right? The purple swirlies, that's that's the background of evil. So I wonder. And uh, Akira has been living in this world just like that. She's basically treating this whole situation as an isekai, right? I got sent to another world. Uh, well, I guess this is my life now. I might as well try to make the best out, make the best of it. Yeah. And she has a grudge with all the rogue testers who make normal life impossible, who turn this quiet little normal world into something where people fly and castles crumble, right? And she doesn't like that because it breaks her immersion, for the lack of a better term. Amano is having an intense face here. <laughs> uh, friends in the Principality of Sai, and of course she's joining us, whether we want it or not. Very good question. Ah, sorry, it's kind of late. Mm. Very question. Uh, very good concern on Amano's part, right? Like she had absolutely no qualms cleaving that guy in half. She did not even i don't know wonder can i maybe solve it a different way or can i maybe take away his the bug stone so that he can't be debugging or can i maybe i don't know imprison him or whatever she did not even as far as we know consider that if you die in the game you die in real life no she just came up and cleaved him because he's breaking her immersion and if you break her immersion, you deserve to die. Not the best mindset to have, or... Not the best. Could be the best, actually, in this particular situation. But not the most... Uh, stable? I guess? Maybe? I don't know. I trust you, Amano-san, and yet Amano-san did not tell you the whole story, did not tell you the whole truth. Yeah. They're still, I mean, they, Amano, is still keeping secrets. Uh, Haga is very open about pretty much everything. Everything that Haga knows, Amano knows as well. Uh, Amano is keeping secrets, though. And I don't like it. I really don't like it. Uh, usually when uh, the fact that one character keeps secrets from the other is like made apparent and made clear in a show or in manga book whatever any sort of media it's basically a given that this fact will come and bite them in the ass somehow one way or another something's gonna happen it will either cause a rift between them which is what happens in like romance stories and rom-coms and, and their ilk, or it could lead to some issues where if only Haga had known, then the issue would not have happened, right? Something's gonna happen with that. New Seeker friend. Scrambled eggs, soft French toast, whipped cream. Whipped cream touching scrambled eggs, though. Ugh. No. Please, no. I generally don't like it when, like, runny, wet foods of different kind, like, touches each other. For example, when I have, like, I don't know, potatoes with some sauce or gravy or whatever, then I gotta have my salad or whatever I'm having with it in, like, a separate bowl. I can't have it all on the same plate because how am I gonna eat... Is a forkful of, I don't know, beetroot when it's smothered in gravy. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm weird like that. But this is even worse. Like, scrambled eggs with, with whipped cream. Unless it's like, I don't know, not sweet whipped cream. Like... You could technically make savory whipped cream, and I guess that might work with scrambled eggs. 
Scrambled eggs would not work with French toast, though. Unless you make the French toast savory. But is it really French toast when it doesn't have sugar and vanilla in it, is it? Some existential questions we're asking here. <laughs> and besides that, we get something that looks like, I don't know, English muffins and uh, some, uh, some fruit. Yeah, Nicolas not gonna get a single taste out of it. <laughs> it's just Tesla. Although Tesla is staying surprisingly quiet, isn't she? Like, you'd think she would have a comment on... I don't know. Hey, Amano, it was dangerous giving Shacho a tablet. Or... There is your next goal. I detect a presence of Rook the buggers in the area. Go there. Or, you know, something. But she just appeared, ate Nicola's food, and disappeared. Going to the Federated Kingdoms of Stamao. Around some sort of a bay or something. The opposite of a peninsula. Mm, I only ever use it against bad debuggers. Sure, I mean, that's perfectly fair. Actually, actually, though. Uh, like, I know that Haga has this very solid rule against using the debug stone, but I think, I really think it should be relaxed somewhat. At least relaxed to the point of, you know, when in dire straits, when facing other Rook debuggers, Maybe I can allow myself to, I don't know, fly briefly or something like that. I understand where he's coming from, sure. Um, it carries a lot of risk, but I mean, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, I'd say. Fencer with a Zweihander. Shaman with level 1 wind spells. A thief with the physique of a barbarian and a regular villager with a mage's weapon. Amazing party. <laughs> new comrade, new adventure. Yeah, let's go. Uh, lots of um, slideshows in this episode. Like This entire journey is basically a slideshow. Oh! Ah, sorry. Uh, then the entire cook-off is basically a slideshow as well. Giants. Right. Not aggressive. But apparently they attacked a village. To the point where a uh, villager had to protect it. A cook-off. Yeah, as I said, another slideshow. Uh, Haga gave us what? Mountain herb soup. Even though he just cooked meat. Sure. I mean, if you're cooking meat, there's always some, like, burnt, slightly crispy stuff left on the bottom of the pan. That's the good stuff. Pour some water over it, or some bouillon, or some, I don't know, wine or whatever. Deglaze the pan, and you can get some really nice base for a sauce, for example, or maybe even a soup. Meanwhile, she prepared a whole, like, proper cut of meat with some gravy, with some garnish, a blueberry tart or whatever. I mean, Haga's food is very simple, but probably nutritious enough to survive. Meanwhile, she gives that additional, like, level of, um, of mastery over it. Yeah, I mean, that's what additional levels in cooking do. Yeah, definitely Akira, apparently. Haga cares about debugging. Yeah, probably all of his skill points went into went into debugging related uh, or abilities uh, helpful in debugging. Giant from the sky. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. Federated Kingdoms of Stamau. A collection of small tribes in the Stamo Mountains. Several hundred of them live in constant conflict, except when faced with an external threat. They then come together as one due to an ancient treaty. 
Lord Elf, a woodland race with long ears and porcelain skin. Their exceptional capacity for magic makes Lord Elves, who are trained as mages, the most feared opponents on the battlefield. And yet she's a fencer, not a mage. Of course. More giants, but they just retrieve the body. I is this how monsters behave? Or is this also abnormal? See? This is the... The thing that I talked about with, with like layers of trying to figure shit out. Because if they're just monsters and behave as monsters, then... It's interesting to see that they care about their fallen brethren and that they will collect the bodies pro potentially to give them a proper burial. And a burial means some sort of right, means they have some sort of a civilization. And it carries interesting implications with it. If we look at it as perhaps a bug or a shortcut or something where maybe the giants are using the same programming of NPCs, except with an added layer of aggression or something, right? And they essentially behave like NPCs would. Then it carries completely different implications with it. I'm assuming this is where the budget from the slideshows went, because this fight is like actually animated. Not a giant, but very strong indeed. With a very big sword. Yeah, we get some actual proper animation here. And again, another like layer of speculation, right? Why this voice? Immediately, it, it could be a debugger who just has this voice and has a different physique in-game, which creates this discrepancy. Sure. Uh, it could be a big guy NPC who was mistakenly given a different voice. Yeah, already happened before with the um, the torturer being given a English voice lines, right? For example, full of expletives and uh, and all to boot. Uh, so another possibility, right? And uh, another possibility is apparently an NPC. The King's Seeker, who's not a debugger. Interesting. Village gets attacked by giants a lot, yeah. Village of Fighters. Uh, one day a Seeker came to our village, right, and he was just a young boy, just a young runt, which is why he has the voice that he has. Which is why he behaves the way he behaves. And here came a Seeker. Uh, is this the guy that we've seen in the opening? Let me, let me scroll right quick. Mm. No, I thought it might be the guy on the left, but uh, it's someone else. Different clothes, different everything. Yeah. Yamanaka. Some sort of, I don't know, kanji wordplay or whatever, or I don't understand moon runes, so I'm not going to be able to understand it. I have it. Thanks to him, I have enough power to fight the giants. Right. A did something, yeah, probably some sort of a console command. No, the bug. Something that the debugger did. Uh, opened the stats of the character and increased them. Or called a console command, or did any number of things possible. Which creates an interesting question. Are there any side effects of that? If there are, and there often are, which is why Haga is so reluctant using his debug stone, then uh, sure, understandable. If there are no side effects, at least you know immediate side effects, because you could you could say that uh, that him being ostracized from the from the village is a side effect of someone tampering with his stats. Sure, absolutely. But if there are no side effects, like I don't know, 
in a year he's gonna burst and die or uh, he's unable to whatever do his previous job or any number of things I really see no reasons why we wouldn't be able to do that to, to Nicola. Actually, a village of warriors. He probably already had the class of warrior, or maybe young warrior, or upstart warrior, or warrior child, or something like that, right? And he simply got a buff of just pure stats. So probably not a class change, not a job change. So we could maybe increase Nicola's strength, but she would be able to use it to move bales of hay more efficiently because she's just a villager. She doesn't have the necessary class. Which does raise a question of class restrictions. Are there any? We know that there are stat restrictions, right? You need a certain amount of strength to be able to wield a certain sword. Do you need to be a warrior, though? Can you just be a mage? But spec in strength, for whatever godforsaken reason, and be able to wear full plate and wield double-handed axes. Is that a possibility? Because if so, then we could possibly crank up Nicola's stats a little and make her able to wield a sword or a staff or cast spells or learn spells, even if we get her wisdom and intelligence enough. Maybe she's going to be able to use a staff of fireball where she can't necessarily cast spells of her own, but she can use that stuff and cast fireball, right? Better than nothing. I wonder, uh, no, yeah, Yamanaka vanished. We're visiting. The path is blocked, blocked no more. Not much regard for anybody around though. Like he didn't throw this would uh what call it this trunk of the cliff or didn't move it to the side he threw it he threw it at the people could that be a side effect i don't know could he actually be the monster that the other villagers claim him to be maybe moravi settlement old name not really uh where exactly is moravia or, well, was, because I guess it's like a historic landmass. Yeah, it's in Czech Republic. The area of uh, Brno. Yeah, the area of uh, Brno. Stranice. And... Uh, Żluty Kopec. I don't know if those are parts of Brno, or are they, like, separate... <laughs> separate towns. No, I don't think they're separate towns. Moravsky Kras. Yeah, the the name Moravi, Moravia still exists. The uh, village of Moravani, Modzice. Yep. Oh, and apparently there is a town in Iowa, in the Apanus County, that's also named Moravia. <laughs> okay, so yeah, not not a weird name, Haga. Not not as not as old as you would like it to be. Maybe we're in Iowa. Entirely possible. People are running away from him. Uh because of the infamy? Because of the fact that he beat up one of the villagers and ripped off his limbs? Could be. Could be. Just, you know, as a stat that an NPC or a player or whatever might have, like stat named, I don't know, Dread. If you keep killing and damaging and hurting villagers, you gain Dread and then villagers start running away from you. Maybe. Uh, was there a game that used that? Maybe one of Elder Scrolls, I'm not sure. 
honestly. Um, Sacred, the first, N not quite the same system, uh, but in Sacred, if you were playing as a uh, vampire, as va va vampire, vampires, the, the vampire lady, vampire knight, I believe the class was called, uh, villagers would just run away from you. No, it wasn't a vampire. It wasn't a vampire knight. It was the the demoness. Yeah, the demoness from the underworld uh, extent ex expansion. Yeah, when you were a demoness, people would run away from you. God, I gotta play some sacred. I haven't played it in years. Uh, fellow fighters, not particularly happy to see them though. I was fully expecting Haga to Haga and the team to be ambushed in their sleep and just I don't know, I fully expected the villagers to try and kill them or something like that. But no. Okay, what are they talking about exactly? If that man were here, this wouldn't have happened. That man being who? The uh, the debugger? that ran away, or went away, I guess. Maybe this is what he wanted from the start. Maybe. So the problem are... So right, yeah, they're planning. And my camera is also uh, flickering. Great. Just fucking technology hates me today. <laughs> Which... Actually, though, I'm recording it this late because I had a bit of an electrical issue at home. So <laughs> I guess you could say, yeah, technology does hate me today. Uh, I blew the fuses because it, a uh, what you call it, a light bulb went out in uh, in the bathroom, and there is no other source source of light. So we had to change it, and I bought a new. Uh, uh, I, I had to go and buy a new light bulb, and I switched the light bulb, and it didn't work. And it apparently was some something with the lamp, and not with the light bulb. And I tried to like, I, I thought it's it might be like this little like flip uh, piece of thing metal that touches the light bulb up top. That's maybe bent a little bit too much, or maybe rusted or something. I. Stuck my screwdriver there and didn't turn off electricity. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine how that went. Didn't shock me or anything, thankfully, but... Uh, but it blew the fuses, so... Don't do that. Uh, makes a sound only else can hear. I mean, with ears like that? Entirely possible. Fat roof? Yeah, actually... I think this is like the first time I actually see someone using the property of a thatch roof of being a bunch of pieces of straw or leaves or whatever, and you can just kind of move them apart and just walk in this way. I don't think I've ever actually seen anything like that being used. But it makes sense in retrospect that you can just go through a thatch roof, can't you? Makes perfect sense, actually. He's protecting the village, yeah. What he did to my brother. Ripped off his arms, ripped off his leg. Or cut them off. Barely survived. It'll never work, he's a monster. What did Yamanaka did to Gale, do to Gadel? Uh, like, my current theory would be that... Um, you can't speed certain things up, basically. Gadel is a kid, 10 year old or so, who's been given the body of a Greek god and the power to throw giants around. And he just doesn't know how to use it. He just doesn't have restrain, right? Like, he moves as if he wanted to swat something away, because that's what he would do when he's a child, right? Uh, another child ran up to him and said, your mama's so fat, 
And then he would slap that kid and the kid would be like, oh, no, don't do that. I'll tame my father. But now because he's so strong, it will rip his head off. And he just doesn't know that. Right? Because if you grow to this strength, grow to this side, grow to this size, you slowly, slowly, slowly learn your strength and learn what movements you can allow yourself to make. And to what degree and to what strength and to at what speed, right? You learn that. But if you get instantly put in the body of a berserk, you're not going to know how to control it. And also, you're not going to have the wisdom that comes with age, so to speak. Uh, which is basically, you can say, mellowing out, right? Kids are cruel. Kids are cruel, Jack, uh, as they say. And, uh, I mean, it's not even about cruelty. It's about some weird... Uh, I mean, weird. Uh, their brains just aren't fully formed yet. And uh, they are prone to make odd decisions, right? Like, many kids do harm to themselves and others not even because of any particular malice, but just through sheer not understanding how things work, right? Not seeing potential repercussions of it, not realizing that the warning sign is there probably for a reason and you shouldn't be bathing in that water because it's actually so heavily based that it will dissolve your skin off your bone, right? Hey, uh, do it on a dare, do it on a dare, right? Peer pressure and shit like that. Kids are prone to it because they just don't know any better. And Gadel is also in this situation. Like, he would be like, oh, for shits and giggles, I'm gonna throw you and you try to land. How? Well, that doesn't register the, the how. It's just a moment of fun. I'm gonna have fun throwing you and you're gonna have fun soaring through the air. And I'm gonna catch you, no worries. Right? This sort of an approach. And both of those things, right? The lack of feeling for one's own body and the lack of proper decision-making ability, that makes Gadel. He's a menace, he's a danger, but not necessarily through any fault of his own, I don't think. I don't think it's anything like he gets into berserk rage and starts punching random villagers or anything of the sort. We'll see, though. We'll see in the next episode, I would assume. This isn't a sub-quest, but I gotta help. Yep. Sure enough. Alrighty, then. There we go. So, 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 episode 9. Uh, was it good? I don't know, honestly. I mean, it wasn't bad, is, is what I'm gonna say. It wasn't bad. Um, it raised some interesting uh, possibilities and interesting questions, right? Both about the world, both about the game, as well, how it's programmed, what's possible, what's not possible, how it works, on very, like, base level even, um, it created some potential possibilities of editing NPCs, if that's something that our uh, heroes might ever want to get into, right? It did give us a lot of additional world building, for sure, absolutely. Uh, it gave us a new character, it gave us a new possible goal. It gave us the knowledge about other um, other debuggers that might be at large and we might have to get rid of, right? Uh, this episode gave us a lot of that. The execution, though... I mean, this show, even from the very get-go, it was not Freeren, it was not Shangri-La Frontier. Right, let's let's set up a baseline there. But it still felt a little bit on the cheap side having two slideshows in a single episode. Right? 
we get a bit of fight for that, I think, maybe. But that doesn't change the fact that we did get two slideshows. Slideshows? Hmm. Freeren did slideshows. But they were different. They were moving slideshows. You can't even call them slideshows. They were like a set of vignettes, right? You would have a couple of seconds of jumping over a bubbling brook. Then you would have a second of uh crossing a path right movement then a couple of seconds of riding a cart then a second of start being panicked because fern is pouting right you would have those things which would make a slideshow that's supposed to just show the passage of time right we were traveling from a to b and to show that passage of time we're not gonna instantly teleport we're gonna show a little bit of how they went there but it was all in Frieden, it was all moving, so it wasn't necessarily a slideshow. In this case, it was a slideshow when they were moving from point A to point B, right? The initial segment of the travel. And uh, that's still fine, right? Shows very often use slideshows like that to show travel. Absolutely, I kind of got used to it. But there is a reason they usually limit themselves to just one slideshow like that in an episode. Because when a second slideshow begins during the cook-off, I really thought, couldn't they have animated it slightly? Just show the, the knife moving, right? Show the stew bubbling and boiling, right? L little things like that. It would elevate it from a slideshow into just a set of vignettes. Uh, so that would be for sure my criticism of this episode. Overall, though, I mean, it was enjoyable. It, it was also a very set up -y episode, and it's always kind of hard to rate set-up episodes because nothing really happened quite yet. We're preparing for things to happen. So, kind of hard to talk about it. It's just a prelude. Yeah. I think that's that's going to be about it from me. It's uh, already been over an hour. Uh, I attribute some of that time because due, due to it being late. And uh, when it's late, I find myself always being very talkative and at the same time not being able to find words and losing the words and uh, mumbling and bubbling and not making sense. So sorry for that. If this episode was a little bit more rambly than usual, it probably was. Uh, but yeah. I think that's gonna be it from me for today, for this episode, but you guys, you tell me, what did you think of this episode, of my reaction, my theories, stuff like that, down in the comments below. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to be notified of future videos, not only QA Sakai, but also uh, Shangri-La Frontier, I wanted to say, well, I wish we had next season of Shangri-La Frontier, alas. We only have shows like, uh, I don't know, Vistoria, uh, bye bye Earth, Spice and Wolf. Who who even heard of that, right? Uh, they're good. Go and watch them. Uh, support. Uh, uh, click the bell. Yeah, click the bell to be notified of when I go live and when my videos go live. And also support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon down below, where for ten bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows. And for just a dollar, you get a role on the Discord and a place in the credits. You can also support me directly on YouTube through memberships, super thanks, super chats. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's going to be it from me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my wonderful Patreons, QB, Without an Edzer, Rene, Yuki, Ally, Dr. Ward, Akaman, Sir, Marsh, Fussell, and Hans, Peter. And you can join them if you want without having to get any steroids or whatever makes the muscles grow big. 